So let us start with a very simple example of uh, decoherence versus interference. We know that the power of quantum computation is in quantum interference. So now I want to show you, on using a very simple example of a single qubit interference, how uh, decoherence kills quantum interference. So for this, let's go back to our golden circuit, right? So the single qubit interference, the Hadamard phase Hadamard. But as you can see, I introduce a, an extra feature here. So I, I will assume that in between the Hadamard gates, uh, the qubit will interact with the environment. And the interaction between the qubit and the environment is of the measurement kind of type. So the, the, the environment will try to measure the qubit in the computational basis. So the environment is trying to learn whether the qubit is in state 0 or in state 1 when the qubit is in, be in between the two Hadamard gates. As you can see, the interaction is of this type. Qubit in state 0, environment in some state E, um, evolves into qubit still in state 0, but the environment learns something about uh, the, the, the state of the qubit and uh, evolves from the state E to state E0. And uh, likewise, when qubit is in state 1 and the environment is in state E, um, the qubit environment uh, evolves into 1 tensor E1, where E1 is, is, is you know, the new state that, that knows something about uh, the, the state of the qubit. We, we shall assume that uh, E0 and E1 are not necessarily orthogonal, so let me just write that E0, E1 is equal to V, E, I, alpha. The scalar product of, of the two, as you can see, is, is not necessarily orthogonal, it's not necessarily zero. Okay, um, so we know that in the absence of, of, uh, of the environment, in the absence of decoherence, we, we have a nice clean quantum interference of, the, of a single qubit, and when we measure the output in the computational basis, we get either zero or one. And the probability of getting 0, 1 oscillates with, uh, with phi. So it should be a deja vu experience for you. We see you've seen this before. Um, so here is a plot of uh, the probability that you see 0 at the output. It uh, oscillates between 1 and 0. Now let's see what happens when uh, we include the decoherence into the circuit. So we will step through uh, through the circuit, but now we have to include the environment as well. <coughs> so we start in state 0, so our qubit is in state 0. The environment is in state E. After the first Hadamard gate, the, the qubit goes in a superposition of 0 plus 1, and the environment is in state E. And then we have the phase gate, um, so that we have uh, the state of the qubit 1 over square root of 2, 0 plus e i phi 1, and the environment in state E. So then the interesting part happens. We have uh, decoherence now. So decoherence uh, hits the qubit, and the environment is trying to find out whether the qubit is in state 0 or in state 1. So that means now the, the qubit is entangled with the environment after this interaction. So we have a state 1 over square root of 2, and uh, here we have a 0 environment in state E0 plus E i phi 1 E1. Okay, so that's uh, that's the state uh, after the after decoherence, after this blob here, which uh, denotes decoherence. And then we still have the Hadamard gate. So after the Hadamard, the second Hadamard, uh, let me just write this as uh, 1 over 2. And uh, I'm just going to collect terms on the environment side, so I'm going to have here E0 plus EI phi E1 over 2. Let me just correct this. It will be this 
one here e naught minus e i phi e one over two. Okay, so now uh, if we then look at the probability that uh, we see state zero, that the state of the cube is zero, um, so that's that's going to be equal to this mod square, right? Um, so this probability p of zero will be equal. If we just take mod square of that, that will be half. Um, one plus, and then I will have here e not e one e i phi plus complex conjugate. So essentially, what I get here now using this expression here, I have half one plus v. And then you'll have here cos phi plus alpha. So this is um, this is our final expression for the probability that we see zero in the presence of decoherence. So if you now look at this expression, you can see that there are two parameters that modify the oscillations. One is this parameter v that affects the amplitude of the oscillations and then there will be so this alpha here is the is the shift of our cost curve um, so let me just um, try to plot it now so this is v and uh, say this this will be alpha so now our, our plot will look something like this. So you see what happens um, with, um, with decoherence when, when the two states of the environment are getting more and more orthogonal to each other. So then V, V actually stands for visibility of this interference pattern v goes to zero so it's sort of in the limit you can see that we don't have any oscillations whatsoever so in the limit of v equals zero the probability is equal to half no matter what the phase is so we lose quantum interference we use we lose quantum properties of um, of the system um, this you know the phase shift can play a role, but uh, I think the more critical parameter here is uh, is the visibility v. So as you can see, somehow you know the more the environment is affected. Quite often we think about uh, decoherence as, or we we talk about decoherence as environment affecting your qubit, which is you know fine, but it's actually probably more important to realize that the distraction to interference comes from the degree to which the environment is affected because it, it you know the more environment knows about the state of the qubit the more quantum interference is, is destroyed um, then of course you know if we don't have quantum interference then we lose the power of uh, quantum information processing so this is a very simplistic explanation why decoherence and how decoherence destroys uh, in, uh, interference. Now we are going to look at uh, more general interactions between qubits and the environment and our next step is to understand uh, how we can digitize quantum errors. Um, so I will introduce the concept of quantum errors and we'll will sort of revisit the whole scenario but uh, with some uh, additional terms here.